Nick. Hello. Hey, buddy. Nice to meet you. See you. Welcome see you. at Blue Coffee Campus. Thank you for having me up here today. I'm looking forward to getting some roast again. Great. Welcome at Boots Coffee Campus. Today here we have Ryan and Nicholas Berardi from Mostra Coffee from San Diego. And Nicholas is practicing here on our Gießen W6A, which will be used at the upcoming International World Coffee Roasting Championships because Nick is the US National Roasting Champion. And we're very happy to have them here they're here to um, practice with various of their own coffees and they're getting ready to become the new world champion. To win the Roaster of the Year is an all-encompassing award, so how to go about it is achieved uh, by uniqueness in how the company approaches different things. Mostra, for example, uh, qualified for the fi fi as a finalist a couple years in a row for the Roast Magazine Award. Um, because of uh, the, the virtues and the goals of the company as a whole. Being founded by four Filipino Americans with no background in coffee whatsoever, who decided that they wanted to use coffee as a vehicle to try to help eradicate poverty in their ancestral homeland. Being a part of that helps all of us on a daily basis keep our mission very strong and keep our focus on improving every way that we can to help achieve that goal. Um, at Mostra, we roast uh, quite a wide array of coffee. We do focus on coffee from the Philippines uh, and every year buy as much coffee from there as possible as part of the core uh, mission of Mostra itself. Uh, but that said, we, we buy coffee from all over, from multi multiple importers, uh, all parts of the world. Um, I myself, I'm partial to uh, Kenyan and Yemeni and Sumatran coffees. I like the combinations of uh, complexity and intensity that those origins can offer in different ways. Um, but uh, in terms of varietals of coffee, I really like uh, exploring a little bit more um, into trying to find lots that are less common. So we can all find SL34 lots, but if you're looking for an SL28 lineage lot, it's usually gonna be blended with the 34 or with the Ruru 11. So whenever we can try to find something that's a little outside of our wheelhouse, it gives me room to grow as a roaster. We're looking first thing first to iron out uh, anything that might be deficient in the cup profile. From there, uh, I normally look to achieve sweetness, and if I can keep it clean and achieve sweetness, then I'm aiming for complexity. Uh, if I can keep it clean and achieve sweetness and achieve complexity, then it's how do I tweak the balance of the complexity, and so on and so forth, through a hierarchy of tasting elements that I wish to achieve. Um, if I'm able to make those adjustments and modulations to the roast profile in, in any myriad uh, number of ways, then I feel like I'm constantly pushing to see the tools that I can have in my tool belt and achieve better coffee overall. Out of the dozen plus or so approaches that I can take to coffee, whether it's different modulation charts or rate of rise curves or um, different techniques to approaching a roast, I found that a lot of times doing a delayed gas application or a soak uh, at the beginning of the roast allows me to set up my approach going into a phase change a little bit better for some of the more um, intensely processed coffees. Well, right now I'm enjoying the, uh, the good life as part of the roasting profession. Um, I've gotten to travel uh, up here to roast coffee at Boot Coffee in preparation for Milan, which is going to be a treat in and of itself. My father is going to be joining me there because he grew up uh, across parts of Italy, so that's going to be a real treat. Um, and even recently I, I uh, had the honor of going to Hawaii and giving a little roast seminar at the Hawaii Coffee Association Conference. Um, but I think also the the normal day-to-day -day part of roasting I find enjoyable. I never shied away from customer interactions when I was a baby barista, um, when I would a lot of times, you know, be wild and wacky and insane and loud and uh, really enjoyed customer interactions. But I more so enjoy uh, the roaster lifestyle of showing up to work before the sun rises, uh, getting my, my work in early in the day, finishing around midday, hopefully most days, 
Um, and really just having that much closer of a relationship to the coffee. I feel that it allows me to better personally uh, place emphasis on the value chain of coffee by uh, being so hands-on with it and cupping basically every single batch we roast. Even if we, even if we roast 60 batches of dark roast uh, Brazil during the week to appease our wide-ranging customer base at Mostra, I still go through and cup everything because there's usually something I can learn. And that thirst for knowledge is what's kept me in coffee for such a long time in the first place. So. The, there, there's a bunch to, uh, to enjoy about being a coffee roaster, and I think that uh, there's a potential. It, takes a, it, does, it, it doesn't take all kinds in terms of uh, personalities or work fits to be a coffee roaster, but there's not just one set sort of thing that is the definition of the, of the profession. I think the, the secret to winning the United States Roasting Championship this year was Something that I, I kind of felt immediately in the aftermath was I didn't do a lot of intensive training specific to the competition because I felt like every day I went to work, I was preparing for that. Um, I kind of had an idea that as long as I try to achieve every day while I'm roasting coffee, uh, whether it's a very refined, expensive nano lot or something that we're doing that's going to go into a coffee beer that's going to be hidden by a lot of those note, uh, tasting notes. Um, when I qualified for the, the U.S. Roasting Championship back in early 2020, I had only been roasting coffee for about five months. And so qualifying there just let, kind of let me know that I had the skill set to evolve into uh, being able to achieve more. Uh, sometimes we can kind of overcomplicate things when really there's kind of a few basic rules to it. And one of them is, does it taste good? Um, so looking at my background in uh, culinary arts and, and being able to take that approach to coffee, you know, does it taste good? Yeah, this tastes great. Might not be the optimal curve for it, but I can work around and smooth those things out. So. Um, just working every day, cupping every day, loving what I do and working with great people around me is, was the best preparation I could ever have for, uh, for competing. And then of course, the community of roasters in Boston, uh, everybody was supportive of everybody else and um, you know, anybody could have won that competition. I just happened to be the one to uh, get a feather in my cap that day. It's pretty new to me, uh, roasting on the geese in here today because it has a lot of functionality that I don't use on a daily basis. I had, I had mentioned to uh, some of the other people up here on the boot campus today that our roaster is uh, an older model roaster back at Mostra. And so I can control the, the damper and I can control the gas level um, with all the more modern touches on the geese and machine that you have here. I'm able to control the drum speed, control the airflow pressure, uh, control the gas down to a percentage point, as well as use an automatic function to help regulate the environmental temperature. So there's a lot, uh, a lot of gears turning in my head right now as we speak as to uh, how I might be able to use these manipulations to my favor uh, going into the World uh, Roasting Championship.